Thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed. Um, again, it's my honor and pleasure to talk today after um, uh, the very impressive presentation of Dr. Nasser Ghatani. My presentation is not going to be impressive and interesting like his. However, I'm going to try my best to uh, shed light on um, uh, the importance of our macroeconomic applications, especially here in the kingdom, and uh, walk you a little bit about uh, or you know through the challenges that any researcher or any actually for market economists will face in uh, adopting and implementing pharmacoeconomic tools and assessing different pharmaceuticals. So without further ado, let me start. Uh, before I get started, I need to disclose, uh, I have nothing to disclose about uh, any actually affiliation with any pharma or non-pharma companies. Um, the objectives of my presentation today is to um, talk a little bit about the importance of pharmacoeconomics um, in today's healthcare market. Uh, also, uh, we'll shed light about certain challenges and hurdles in implementing pharmacoeconomics in healthcare settings, especially here in the kingdom. Um, also, I will uh, talk about the challenges in adopting uh, pharmacoeconomics and financing prescription medications uh, for public healthcare settings. And uh, before I actually get to the challenges, I will shed light on the emerging rules of health technology assessments uh, globally, as well as here in the kingdom with uh, certain actually caveats that I will uh, talk about them at the end that we might have more time to discuss them in the discussion session. So before I, we talk about the importance of pharmacoeconomics, I need, we need to know what are the perspective of the healthcare payer, what is the perspective of the reimbursement bodies. Uh, in healthcare in general, or in economics in general, we have three main uh, perspectives. We have the romantic, monotechnic, and economic point of view. And romantic point of view, that you know, says that, or says that every, all patients should get whatever they want, uh, whatever treatment is available, regardless of its uh, incremental cost or incremental benefits, something that is very nice to have. However, it is not actually, uh, it could not be achieved and uh, it is not actually affordable to, to have. The monotechnic point of view simply says that, well, uh, we're going to buy one medication to cover all patients, for example, with type 2 diabetes or one class of medication will cover, uh, for, uh, one, uh, we're going to uh, select one medication from each class of medications to cover, let's say, hypertension without acknowledging the fact that patients respond to treatment differently. And this cannot be applied as well easily in healthcare. The economic point of view is actually based on three fundamental observations. First, we have re, uh, re, uh, the resources are scarce. We don't have um, enough resources to cater for every wish and whim of every healthcare provider and healthcare institution. Uh, secondly, resources have alternative views. And here we're talking about the opportunity cost. All right, we have, let's say, 3 million reals to cover the, uh, the, um, the uh, pharmaceuticals in certain healthcare institution. However, uh, this 3 million can be used in other actually um, um, uh, purposes, especially with the other words that we are talking about a healthcare institution that, that is uh, providing care to patients um, in different uh, departments, different actually specialties. So uh, here we're talking about the opportunity cost. So if we save the money, it could be used and actually for another purpose, or if we spent it, it cannot, we cannot have uh, uh, you know, the money to spend it for something that is unaddressed or unmet uh, in our healthcare uh, actually uh, institution. Uh, people do, do indeed actually have different preferences and they want different things. So what works, for example, in Germany uh, is not, does not necessarily work in Saudi Arabia and what works in the United States does not necessarily work as well here in Saudi Arabia. So medications, yes, they can be effective or effic efficacious in clinical trial, but that does not mean that they are going to be uh, effective in the management of different disease states in real life settings. Um, why do we need to apply for market economics? And why do we need to talk about economics? Uh, well, if we just take a little bit uh, a look actually at the Saudi uh, Ministry of Health budget, you can easily tell that the even before the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen an increase of about 17.27% in the um, healthcare expenditure for the Ministry of Health between 2018 and 2019. Uh, and in fact, you know, it, it was increased by about 11 billion rials in only one year. Uh, but if we look at the figure of 2020, uh, 2020, when the pandemic actually has struck the uh, the world, uh, this actually budget has almost doubled from what it was back in 2018. 
Are we going to see a sustainable increase in healthcare uh, spending? If this is the case that means we need to adopt certain economic tool to improve our spending and get the value for the money that we are actually spending, spending on health, uh, different healthcare uh, technologies and services. Uh, how are we going to finance healthcare? If we keep, if you continue, you know, moving the same rate of spending, uh, we are afraid that we're going to ha have to increase our taxes uh, to, or to, or impose new taxes to keep funding healthcare for everyone. Uh, generally speaking, in the world, they, they they utilize or they levy general taxation at the national level to fund their health, um, uh, to, their actually healthcare, uh, such as the case of in, in Germany and in the um, in United Kingdom. Uh, local taxation for different states and provinces also applied in Europe, also in the United States. If we think about the CMS, the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, Medicaid is, is, a, is a kind of insurance for uh, impoverished people and is mostly actually levied from uh, local taxes at the state's level for the most part. Social health insurance through different employers and employees. Uh, this is actually the case here as well in Saudi Arabia where um, uh, employers are required to provide or buy health insurance for their employees. Uh, something that we have seen, in Korea, we have actually seen its impact on the utilization of different pharmaceuticals ever since it became into effect almost um, a decade ago. Uh, compulsory social health insurance. Uh, this is, can be the case in the near future when FAB or the Program for Health Assurance and Purchase Purchasing is kicks in. This can be the case because it wouldn't be sustainable unless we have some some sort of compulsory health, social health insurance. Voluntary employer-based health insurance. It's a case, for example, some ministries here in the kingdom where uh, employee employees actually can uh, ha have the option to buy uh, their um, uh, health insurance through um, a program facilitated by their employer. So. Why do we care about pharmaceuticals in the, in the kingdom? <laughs> if we think about uh, the Saudi market, the Saudi pharmaceutical market, it is the largest by far in the Middle East or in the MENA region, the Middle East and North Africa. The Saudi pharmaceutical market represents about 30% of the total um, uh, pharmaceutical market in the uh, MENA region, uh, represent, uh, you know, uh, amounting to about $8.2 billion in 2018, uh, with an increase of about 8%, 7 to 8% back from its, what, uh, what, it, what it was and back to, in 2017 where it was uh, $7.6 billion. Uh, so uh, we are uh, spending more on pharmaceuticals, the increase, uh, the, uh, the rate upon which the uh, spending on um, different uh, pharmaceuticals actually is increasing at a rate which is not sustainable uh, if we think about uh, the way we are funding healthcare um, uh, currently. So, what are the driver drivers of high prescription drug costs? First, we're with you know uh, we are prescribing more medications. We have a higher volume of prescriptions, um, uh, higher prices. Even the old medications, the essential medications, we have seen their uh, prices um, inflated actually in, in different countries. Even you know Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, despite the fact that we have the Saudi FDA, where it's um, actually doing great job in in uh, trying to control the cost and uh, improve the access to essential medication, but uh, but still uh, essential medications, which are generally uh, cheap, uh, are um, uh, we're noticing an increase and in inflation uh, we, in a way, you know, in a manner or in a, in a rate that is unsustainable uh, to actually cover uh, if we keep uh, funding the healthcare the way we are doing right now. Shift to higher price drugs. Uh, uh, there is actually a, a trend towards moving to biologics and new gene therapies. However, their value or the real value in, in um, impacting the uh, quality of life and the, um, uh, the actually the uh, utilization of different healthcare services um, and different healthcare settings is uh, uh, greatly uncertain, something that uh, calls upon us to conduct different for market economic evaluations to uh, reveal the real value of these actually uh, technologies and pharmaceuticals. So uh, once the medication actually gets approved by different regulatory body, they looked at the safety and efficacy and the quality. Safety and efficacy are checked by looking at the randomized controlled trials, mainly at the phase three, and they check their safety and efficacy once uh, and the quality, looking at the GMB standards used in the manufacturing of these pharmaceuticals. But the two important things that once these medications are approved for, for safety and efficacy, are these medications or pharmaceuticals uh, cost effective? Are they affordable? And this is a rule of market economics, something that is largely absent in many actually healthcare settings and countries, unfortunately. 
as I mentioned before, there is a great deal of uncertainty, outcomes uncertainty. Uh, why is that? Because mainly we, when we approve a medication, we, are, we look at the uh, clinical trial, which was a conducting control environment, and I'll come to that in the next few slides. Uh, so um, uh, they, they assess the efficacy, but it does not mean that uh, the, these uh, pharmaceuticals will be uh, effective in real life uh, or real world actually uh, practice. Therefore, we need actually uh, large databases. We need to conduct pragmatic clinical trials or both marketing trials with uh, extended actually period um, duration of recruitment and follow up as well as more relaxed actually inclusion and exclusion criteria. We need to conduct more observational studies to uh, compare the cost effectiveness of different pharmaceuticals using real world data. And uh, we need to build more registries um, to assess the effectiveness of different pharmaceuticals. Efficiency here. Uh, we are talking about the cost effectiveness. We talk about simulation models, Monte Carlo simulation or Markov models, or real, actually, um, uh, real world evidence, which is a trend right now and can inform the policymakers more than any hypothetical cohort or simulation models. Um, this is, has been covered a lot in, in previous um, lectures and workshops about um, uh, the um, uh, actually um, about for basic for market economics. We have different analytical tools that we utilize to evaluate different technologies and pharmaceuticals. Uh, the most important one, of course, is cost effectiveness analysis. Sometimes it's synonymous or used interchangeably with the cost utility analysis when the health related quality of life is involved in as an outcome. Cost consequence analysis will look at the cost and the, uh, the outcome uh, separately cost uh, benefit analysis when we monetize or put a value on both the benefit and uh, and actually the uh, uh, sorry the outcome and the and the cost cost minimization when we assume that they both interventions have the same or equal outcomes but the cost can be different like in the case such as the case of brand and generic budget impact analysis when we assess the affordability of different interventions all right uh, what are the criteria that we utilize to assess the, um, uh, the value of any medications or intervention? Uh, it's cost effectiveness, the burden of illness upon which this medication is used for or uh, was indicated for. Uh, it's impact on the quality of life. It's impact on strengthening the public health infrastructure. If we have any inequality in health outcomes that we need to address, but and if we included that medication, such as the case of rare diseases or such as the case of uh, some actually provinces where they, they are away from the main hubs of healthcare institutions and this medication can address inequalities in delivering care. Uh, we need to utilize survey data, epidemiological data to uh, actually uh, inform us or decision makers about the prevalence and incidence of the different disease states that these medications are indicated for, uh, whether the new intervention will encourage healthy lifestyles, um, uh, what are the societal values and priorities, um, and what are the local needs. For example, here in Saudi Arabia, we have a huge, uh, actually, or a large uh, prevalence of, or high prevalence, sorry, rate of diabetes, which is, uh, by, uh, it could, could be actually a priority for the society and could address a social, uh, social and local need more than any actually uh, medication indicated for other healthcare condition. Um, so what are the trends in healthcare delivery and why pharmacoeconomic is important? Um, it used to be that a physician knows best and physician actually are the ones who uh, will inform the, uh, the, the, the patients about their health uh, states and patients are mostly actually uh, is unaware of what the, the physician is uh, telling him about. So the uh, physician is the only source of information. Right now, uh, patients are empowered by the actually increasing uh, or the popularity of social media and different uh, media outlets, including the internet, where patients can search their disease states and read about the different uh, treatment options available for them, and they can lobby to uh, obtain or get access to certain medications uh, unlike before. Uh, no or limited patient involvement in the best uh, or in the decision-making process. We are seeing a patient involvement globally in the HCA or health technology assessment bodies and patient advocates. Uh, freedom to choose your doctor before right now, uh, especially in England and many healthcare institutions in Europe, and could be the case uh, soon here in Saudi Arabia where the GBs or general practitioners will be the one who will uh, refer patients to specialists. So they will be the gatekeepers before patients being transferred or referred to 
a specialist or, or a specialist or a consultant. The most important point here that I'd like to highlight or, or stress on is the prescription guidelines. Uh, in good old days, uh, clinical guidelines were the main drivers of the market share of different pharmaceuticals. Nowadays, we have, we're seeing an increasing actually rule of health technology assessments where they actually issue different uh, guidelines for reimbursement and uh, for uh, actually uh, pharmaceuticals. So they have their own formulary and only medications that are approved or recommended by different HTA bodies will be reimbursed. So what is health technology assessment? Uh, it mainly aims to inform policy and clinical decision making. It addresses direct and, 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 and I'm sorry, intended uh, effects as well as unintended effects of any health intervention, including medications. It's a multidisciplinary field where health economists, uh, clinical pharmacists, physicians, and others, and biostatisticians are involved and patient advocates to come up with, uh, uh, and using systematic actually approaches to come up with the best recommendation uh, to fund a certain health technology. It also mostly done or requested by relevant authorities, uh, such as Ministry of Health or the National Service in England or the um, actually uh, the um, um, uh, IQWIG is done actually in Germany or the CMC and uh, sorry SMC in, in Scotland or the um, um, actually uh, the Haas in France. So there are different bodies doing the uh, assessment and uh, for uh, submitting their recommendations to the payer, um, uh, to the actual governmental bearer at the end. So uh, they can bear the uh, new products with the current alternatives and they put a value in it using different uh, for market economic tools like cost effectiveness analysis. And so what is the incremental benefit over the incremental, uh, over the actually existing ones and what, what is the incremental cost and whether they, they have a cost effectiveness threshold to decide whether or not this new technology would be cost effective. Uh, to have a HTA dimension uh, or actually a uh, health uh, technology assistant body, you need uh, four dimensions. There, there should be a structure, uh, a clear structure of the HTA program. There should be a clear and transparent method of conducting health technology assessment. There should be clear and transparent uh, processes for conducting HTA. Uh, the HTA actually recommendation should be used in the decision making, something that is unfortunately not done yet, uh, right now in Saudi Arabia, although we have no, witnessed uh, the creation of an HTA body within the Ministry of Health. However, so far we are seeing uh, negative messages sent to the market and may cause uh, actually market disruption or uh, instability to the, uh, you know, uh, to the uh, pharmaceutical actually companies, something that we hope to avoid in the future. So there are typical ch challenges of implementing for market economic. First is the cost of data collection. When a company actually submits its um, uh, economic evaluation of their, their new technology or pharmaceutical, uh, we need to know how they collected the cost and whether the cost is really applicable or relevant to our healthcare setting. The transferability of the data, if they actually collected data from the uh, from United Kingdom, whether the data that they collected will be transferable and applicable in our uh, society. Sampling biases, selection biases is done a lot in many economic evaluation and the Bayer's analytical skills. So uh, usually the Bayer's actually outsource that to uh, a CRO to do it for them. However, um, uh, there, there can be some limitations in the Bayer ability to interpret and analyze the data and then submit it in a way that will uh, actually um, uh, limit the access of this medication as at the same time not reveal the real value or overestimate the real value of the intervention. Uh, there are global concerns uh, with regard to for market economic evaluations. First of all, challenges, I would say. Uh, first of all, a training edu and education. Uh, although we have here in the kingdom many um, uh, actually graduates from health, uh, for market economics and health economics um, uh, actually in, the, in this field. However, uh, we don't have any graduate program or residency program for market economics or health economics um, uh, that is approved by the Ministry of health. Uh, we don't have actually um, uh, uh, people who are aware, um, especially in the decision-making body, who can interpret or, or actually evaluate uh, different patient-reported outcomes or conduct and uh, collect patient-reported outcomes and patient-reported experience measures, given the fact that most of these measures are in English or in other languages and they haven't been validated in Arabic. However, this should not preclude us from conducting um, uh, actually patient-reported outcome uh, studies. Uh, methodological concerns in assessing value uh, of health states preferences. Um, uh, 
unfortunately, we don't have any uh, validated actually tool to assess uh, the uh, state preferences for patients in Saudi Arabia, although we have uh, translated uh, tools like Eurocall 5D, WHO Quality of Life Brief, and um, the short form Health Survey 32 or the 12. But uh, these tools uh, have not actually been validated to estimate or get at the actually the utility of, of diff different health interventions. Uh, study designs and generalizability. Uh, when, uh, these are global challenges. Uh, whenever the actually the the um, the any pharmaceutical company submits their request to include their medication, the formulary, or to get it approved by the regulatory body, they use study designs, either a clinical trial, which uh, has a very limited generalizability, or to use actually observational study with uh, numerous uh, number of um, limitations. Poor understanding of the rule of health related to quality of life and value-based pricing and reimbursement. We do understand that when we assess any pharmaceutical and we look at the natural unit, for example, the number of a year, a number, a number of uh, life years gained or the number of uh, millimeter mercury in blood pressure reduction or um, the number of uh, units in A1C reduction with, with, with regard to anti-diabetic medication. Uh, uh, this is this only captures one aspect, but when we talk about the health related quality of life, it's uh, actually multifactorial, it covers different domains, but unfortunately we don't have the experts to evaluate the real impact of these interventions in the decision-making body in the MENA region and here in Saudi Arabia. So um, how about using clinical trial as a data source? Many actually organization, and I'm, sorry, I'm talking about healthcare organization, request data to be uh, submitted um, uh, based on a clinical trial design. However, clinical trials, as we all know, uh, is, are conducted in a controlled environment. So either under ideal conditions, so they don't, don't represent the reality. Also, uh, it has a low likelihood to depict the real life uh, cost effectiveness. Um, uh, may not always uh, represent the clinical significance, although they represent they can indicate statistical significance, but we do all know that the statistical significance does not uh, significance doesn't necessarily mean clinical significance. Uh, their impact on patient cross, uh, the impact of patient crossover on final outcomes. We do know, especially with the, when we talk about. Um, medication use in oncology, there are some patients who crossed over to different arms of treatment, so they can create some form of contamination to the arm of treatment and then can actually high, uh, actually uh, overestimate the impact of the new treatment or underestimate it. So uh, this is one of the limitations of the uh, clinical uh, trials used in economic evaluation. Use of surrogate endpoints as a primary endpoint, for example, when you use the ALB, alkaline phosphatase, as a surrogate endpoint for, uh, uh, for example, uh, hepatic cirrhosis or primary sclerosis cholangitis, and we, we say that ALB is a good indicator or surrogate point, and patients who have a reduction in ALB will have a delay in the progression of the disease, or uh, when we use a BFS or uh, progression-free survival as a surrogate market for the overall survival, and uh, uh, and we say, for example, that uh, the survival will be in a number of years, but in reality, it could be only a month or two, then this is something of concern when we conduct uh, economic evaluation. Therefore, clinical trial shouldn't be the best source of, of uh, for uh, doing evaluation of different pharmaceuticals. Extrapolation survival data. Can you extrapolate the findings beyond uh, the clinical trial uh, follow-up period? This is questionable uh, uh, in, in many, actually, um, uh, scenarios. There are actually okay. barriers of... Uh, I think I need uh, 10 more minutes, actually, Dr. Mohammed, to cover all the uh, points. But anyways, I'll try my best. So uh, there, uh, there was a study published by a group of researchers in, in Georgia, and they actually uncovered or uh, identified uh, three important themes. First, the formulary management uh, and how actually a formulary of medication formulary is managed um, in Jordan, uh, something very similar to here in Saudi Arabia. They mainly look at safety and efficacy and a little bit about the affordability. Uh, data, um, uh, they, they actually reported a uh, problem or shortage of epidemiology, clinical health outcomes, resource utilization, expenditure, expenditure, expenditure data, something that is largely unavailable in the Middle East. Uh, local B studies, very few study, uh, their quality is questionable. Uh, few uh, practicing, uh, practicing, uh, practicing specialists, although we have uh, many actually um, uh, people who are specializing in for macroeconomics, but um, it's more on in, the in theory, but not in practice, unfortunately. 
lack of funding. Uh, we have seen uh, actually in here in Saudi Arabia, great funding for basic uh, sciences, but uh, very uh, or very small percentages, a percentage of this actual funding went to economic evaluation, if there is any. So how actually uh, formulary decision making should be done? Usually we look at the pharmacologic and clinical evaluation data, and then we look at the pharmacoeconomic evaluation. However, in reality, this is not done. Uh, rarely it's done that people look at the pharmacoeconomic data, and even if they look at it, they don't interpret the findings uh, given the aforementioned barriers in uh, a right way. So and actually an editorial that was published uh, a month ago, uh, we, I actually and the group of uh, my uh, colleagues collaborated to uh, or had a meeting to uh, try to uncover or identify the challenges in implementing for market economic evaluations and financing and reimbursement uh, for different pharmaceuticals. The first actually problem or theme that we actually identified uh, was the data availability and accessibility. Although we have a large public healthcare sector, it's fragmented. There is a poor coordination between the different um, healthcare uh, settings, uh, even within the same actually uh, organization like National Guard or King Faisal and Riyadh and Jeddah. Data sharing um, about and cost of and comparative effectiveness studies are ra rarely done. Poor utilization of health, uh, electronic healthcare data, although the government has spent lavishly and um, uh, generously on uh, setting up different electronic healthcare record uh, databases. However, uh, it is largely un uh, un unused actually in uh, uh, generating local evidence to assess the efficacy of different health intervention and technologies. Cost da data, uh, it's largely unavailable and uh, uh, many actually uh, healthcare organizations shun away from sharing it or publishing it uh, to, the uh, to the public. Uh, under appreciation of the pharmacoeconomic rule on formulary management, no local BA evaluation are done. And if they are done, they are done uh, you, you know, uh, based on, on, on individual actually initiatives and not um, at institutional um, actually uh, order or initiative. So their, their impact and their role is largely absent. Uh, lack of awareness about the rule for market economics and assessment, assessing different technologies and prescription drugs. Uh, uh, many actually um, uh, for uh, BNT committees do, although they, they do include any um, for market economic specialists, and if they include, they really actually do any, any economic evaluation of different uh, pharmaceuticals, especially the uh, pricey or expensive one. Resistance of some members, especially some uh, medical doctors, to include for market economics in the decision making process. However, unfortunately, we have seen actually a change in the wave, and physicians are becoming more receptive to the application for market economic and more actually encouraging their their uh, the rule of for market economics in uh, assessing the the uh, different health technology, including medications. Lack of national CE or cost effectiveness threshold. The cost effectiveness threshold is how much you are willing to pay for each increment or each increase in a certain health outcome. And mainly we're talking about here, health related quality of life or um, quality, quality adjusted life year gain or daily avoided, the disability adjusted life year avoided. Uh, however, unfortunately, we don't have an official CE uh, or cost effectiveness uh, threshold uh, that exists despite the uh, numerous actions actually efforts and um, that has been actually uh, spent by some uh, members in the Minister of Minister Health and other organization, but still we haven't seen any uh, cost effectiveness uh, threshold being actually published uh, nationally. Variable Good allocated morning. budget. Okay, uh, variable allocated budget. Okay. You can wrap, you can't wrap up. <laughs> okay, I'll try my best, Dr. Muhammad. I might need two more minutes. Variable allocated budgets and poor coordination between different public healthcare sectors and poor engagement of health outcomes and economics um, researchers at the Health Advisory Board. Uh, this is actually our only example of uh, big data, uh, of health uh, data, actually, uh, like uh, the myocardial infarction and national audit project in England, Medicare in, in the United States. That is um, uh, accessible to the public in um, in the West, especially in the United States and, and Europe. However, we don't unfortunately have big data like um, uh, actually in Europe and the United States. Uh, there are actually some strength and weaknesses of big data. Uh, the strength that's uh, more, more robust actual long-term outcomes data are available for economic models. However, it can be costly to store and manipulate, especially if we don't have the experts to actually set up the, uh, the system or these actually databases. Um, the cost effectiveness of drugs in real world can be done. However, it does not meet the level of scientific um, uh, sometimes rigor uh, like the RCT in certain uh, instances. Uh, this is an example of something that I've done within three months, not because I was uh, lucky or smart, but because of the availability of data in the United States. So I've done a national study 
in three weeks, thanks to the availability of the data, something that I cannot do here in years. How about Saudi Arabia? As you can tell, we have different organizations. We have different healthcare entity. We have a, a fragmented healthcare system. We have a new actual entity within the Ministry of Health, uh, Health Technology Assessment, still uh, an operational. We have Saudi Health Council with only uh, recommendations that are uh, largely unenforced. So who's going to take the lead? Uh, is it the new national regulatory health entity? So what are we going to do actually at the time being? So I believe that hospital-based HTA could be actually the interim solution to incorporate uh, health economic evaluation and establish uh, an office in each tertiary care hospital to evaluate new interventions and inform the decision maker makers and in these institutions about the value of different interventions, especially by uh, uh, gene therapies and biologics. But it needs a, a reformist and it needs a leader to take the, uh, the torch and uh, open up new opportunities for economic evaluation here in the, in the kingdom. Uh, also, we need the for market economics to be applied so we can have a market access entry. And I believe Dr. Hanna will uh, talk about that in more details. If we don't apply for market economic, we wouldn't be able to include high, uh, high, uh, highly expensive and innovative, innovative treatment because these medications will be uh, largely unembarrassed unless we have market access agreements. So we need to have more flexible, actually, healthcare system that allows a reallocation of the resources. So my take home message is, is establishing a large database of healthcare and pharmaceutical utilization is overdue. We need to do it as soon as possible. We need to utilize real world evidence and health economic evaluation, um, and it should be advocated. Um, uh, and we need to assess the health, different health technologies in terms of their clinical and economic values and inform the health uh, policymakers about uh, their real value, uh, given the tight budget constraints, uh, constraints uh, especially with the uh, current pandemic. We need to establish a CET or cost effectiveness threshold and reform the healthcare budget allocation so we can allocate the budget and uh, get the bank for the buck or the value for the money that we're spending. And with that, uh, I conclude. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad. I'm sorry for being so fast in my presentation, but, uh, but I think I uh, uh, underestimated the time, um, actually, uh, slot or uh, period that was allocated to me. Thank you. So I need to utilize my resources in a better way next time. Thank you.